Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Bunny Operator here. This is the first video for 2022 and I want to thank all of you for following along with my peasantries. Uh, I started this channel in January 2021 and as of now, we are officially over 1,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. This whole project was designed for me to share information of what I learned through my firearms journey as well as passing on what I've been doing 2021 was sort of an experiment. I was just doing a data dump of my general activities, what I was doing, what was going on. And a lot of these short videos that you saw showcasing some of my new builds, specifically the Mach 18, the 10.3 Mach 18, the 12.5 A1 build, the 14.5 A2 build, and the 13.9 rifle build. Now that's only some of the rifles in my current collection right now. But there are several others that have not made much screen time. Mostly a lot of the content that I post is on Instagram. And if you go over to my Instagram, you'll see that there's a lot more daily content. And I think 2022 is the point where I start testing a lot of the items that I want to test, specifically with my builds and configurations that I want to try out to see what works best for me and then pass that information to the rest of you so that it can hopefully help you make better decisions for yourselves or at least help you to make determinations if you're on the fence about a subject. So with that, I'm trying to locate camera suggestions, microphones to use better quality, like stands, to film more content when we're out on the range. We're too busy shooting and too busy running our drills. Towards the end of the day, we just kind of forget about filming the content. So if you folks have any recommendations out there on what type of equipment I should be looking into, and uh, XYZ, then you know, feel free to message me and let me know. Contact me on Instagram or comment below in this video and I'll start looking into it. Okay, with that all out of the way, let's go on to the subject of this video, the dad build project. What is the dad build project? Well, if you followed my channel at all and you watched the Inside the Industry trailer, so I am first generation born in the US and this whole entire Asian American journey of mine has been pretty typical, I suppose, with other Asian Americans, 90s, 2000 era, growing up, getting to firearms later on, learning about the constitution and such. So I wanted to kind of start a project as if, if my dad started getting into firearms and then being the stubborn man that he is, I would still give him advice, but he wouldn't necessarily acknowledge the advice. He would just take some of it and then go off on his own and doing his own thing. So you saw from the trailer that there was a Ruger American shown, Ruger American ranch model that takes 5.56 AR-15 magazines. I'm not too sure if I want to necessarily keep that yet. That was just simply a placeholder for that video teaser. I mean, it certainly is appropriate to use that bolt action, but I kind of want to do an AR-15 build as if my dad went out and tried to build himself. And yes, just like the trailer alluded to, I will be looking for New Balance sneakers and cargo jorts. I'll be wearing this specific belt, which I'll get into in a second. So how did this all start? Well, originally I was goofing around one day and I suddenly remembered the zombie reticle from EOTech. So EOTech actually made this. It is called the zombie stopper with the biohazard reticle. And there you'll see this reticle right there. It's a, this is the actual reticle and this is specifically the XPS2-Z, Z for uh, zombie. And it's basically an XPS2, which is absolute co-witness with this gigantic, gigantic reticle that basically takes up the entire window when you're using it. So I was looking around to see if any vendors had this anymore and it's not it's discontinued and way out of stock uh, there's actually two models there's this model and there's the z2 model which is uh it has a bunch of like green toxic uh color scheme on it almost like real tree camo but it has green uh, instead so like toxic green uh, and this goes hand in hand with like the old school hornady zombie ammo if you remember that they basically made those in Whole bunch of different calibers and configurations i'll probably roll in some images here to show you what that looks like and it's basically hornady's standard ammunition they just put a green ballistic tip in front instead of the standard red one and then they called it a zombie ammo charged a bit more for it and made a killing because you know that's the what the cringe of that era decided to use so after i couldn't find any vendors that had this eotech i 
posted on Instagram in my stories asking to see if anybody had it and if they did and wanted to part with it. So one of my followers messaged me and said that they had one available and it was used. They got it in a trade and uh, come to find out that the original hood with the, the, the zombie marking and the biohazard logo on top was painted over. So it wasn't that follower, but whoever he got it from had uh, Duracoated over that. And there's really no way to strip Duracoat off without destroying the finish underneath, essentially. And, and I didn't want that. I wanted to have the novelty of uh, the logos. And I got the optic in and sent it off to EOTech for an out of warranty refresh, basically. So what EOTech does is they take the optic and they give it a once over, update anything they need to update, including internals, replacing any parts that are missing. In this case, I uh, sent it to them and they replaced, they refreshed the internals to my understanding and they replaced the hood and come to find out that uh, I didn't realize they had any of these left, but my thinking is they just take in an XPS2 hood and they uh, laser etch uh, accordingly uh, what, what they need on there so yeah so anyways uh, a few weeks later EOTech sent me the replacement EOTech uh, XPS2-Z or zombie and here it goes now I have it and this snowballed into the thought processes of what I'm going to use to accompany this during that LARP session with the cargo jorts and the New Balance sneakers now the other battle was New Balance over Nike well New Balance is definitely better for my part, um, or at least it's my preference. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the other components. Fast forward to a little while later, I was on Safari Land's website, particularly Safari Land had a coupon code out for, I think it was 40% off of duty holsters, I think it was, or their version of duty. And I was looking for one for my MMP 5 inch, my pro core model. I didn't have quite enough with the discount code for free shipping. So I started searching around and I thought to myself, hey, I wonder if they have a duty style holster for my Ruger SP-101, which is this guy here. This is the three inch Ruger SP-101 model in 357 Magnum, which also takes 30 special. And I had a trigger job done on this a little while ago. Well, I did it. So this double action is quite a bit lighter than the factory. Uh, the internals have been polished out. Uh, the channels have been deburred, if you will. And now it's it's a nice, nice, very smooth, solid gun, essentially. I already have a Bianchi pancake style. Uh, I think it's the Shadow 2. But that wasn't quite what I wanted. It wasn't, it wasn't tacky enough for me. So using holster finder, and lo and behold, they had one for the... Ruger SP-101 3 inch specifically. And it is an SLS only. SLS refers to the self-locking system, which is this hood. Otherwise, it's a, a friction base. So that's technically level two, Safari Land's nomenclature. Level one is the, um, the suede lining where it creates friction. And then level two is any other active retention. So in this case, it's an SLS. So if you were to insert the holster here, insert the gun into the holster, close the locking hood. Now you can't draw it out. So you physically have to, when you grab the, the grip of the gun, push down, rock it forward and draw the pistol from there. So yeah, so that's cool and it worked out. When it came in, I showed it to one of my buddies, uh, to my buddy Kyle, and I know how Kyle is. Kyle gets very, very angry and frustrated whenever I show him something that's absolutely asinine like this. And of course, as expected, he got completely frustrated and he was basically, you know, threatening my life because I created such uh, cringe shit. So I took it a step further, added a QLS, which is the quick locking system here and applied it to a UBL with the uh, QLS female side. And of course now it's quick, quick detach on there. So yeah, that's awesome. So the, that's for you, Kyle. At the same time, I ordered the Safari Land, or rather it's made by Bianchi. They're the same company if you didn't know. Their speed loader holster, which holds speed loaders. And of course I already had these from my uh, from carrying this gun before, but I've had a speed strip holder, which are these if you don't know speed strips are. And we'll get into that in a second here. As far as the, uh, the rest of the belt, this entire belt was made from spare parts that I had lying around, just extras that I didn't use on other belts. So it is in an HSGI standard inner outer belt. It's okay, it's not very stiff. It's actually quite floppy. Um, let me go ahead and close this. It's quite floppy. 
but it is a Cobra Buckle system, which is awesome. I had a random MDOM dump pouch, which is also a good dump pouch. And I think I would use this to hold some loose rounds as uh, time goes on. I do had it, I had a spare STAC Kiwi short lying around, so I threw that on in case uh, I did want to run an M4 type magazine system, or if I did either run the AR-15 or ran the Ruger, they still take AR-15 magazines. So I can use this as a spare mag when we're lapping around with the total kit. And I just had two spare multicam black, um, these are HSGI pistol tacos lying around and not necessarily to carry some automatic pistol mags, but to carry um, other accessories such as flashlight or multi-tool or something like that. But considering that I do have two universal pistol pouches plus an M4 and the Safari Land UBL with QLS. I could technically run this as a standard belt should I want to take multiple firearms out to the range that day. Um, say for example, I get done LARPing around with my revolver. Now it's time to actually train and properly use my system. Then I would throw on a different holster and then just throw in the mags accordingly. And this is a generic tourniquet sleeve here. It's not a soil eater. It's just one that I had lying around, so we just threw it on. Now, if you are not familiar, if some of you are asking why I have my revolver um, speed loader and speed strip pouches on the right side of the gun, because that is actually how you load a revolver. If you're not familiar, I will go ahead and show you. So for revolvers, what you would do, one more time, is you would fire, and then it runs dry. You would take your left hand over the cylinder with your right hand, push forward, pull back, or push down, depending on what type of uh, revolver you have. Smith & Wesson's tend to push forward, Colt and clones tend to pull backward, and Ruger's push down. So what you do is you deactivate the locking mechanism for the cylinder by pushing the release and with your middle finger and ring finger of your support hand, your left hand, you would open it, you push it open. At this point, you can either turn the cylinder over and push down. That would be the fast way to do it if you were uh, so inclined or your dexterity was capable of doing it. Uh, but most of the time, I just kind of rock it open and turn it over with my right hand, palm down and push the rounds out or this, uh, push the empty casings out. Now at this point, the gun stays in your left hand in this cup position here. So I would essentially grab a speed loader from out here from this pouch and insert it accordingly. From here, I'm going to twist to unlock and then pull that out. Drop this. I would reacquire my grip on the pistol, on the revolver and roll the cylinder until it locks into place. So it's not enough just to close it, you have to make sure it's, it's locked in place. From that point, I can reacquire my grip and go back into firing, okay? So once once more, I'll show you from the speed strip now, actually. So since this is already uh, loaded, I am going to come down, grab the cylinder, release the system, release the mechanism, open up the cylinder, come on board, eject all those casings out. So they, they fell out super easily because I actually have polished out the uh, cylinders essentially. So it, and plus it's clean right now. So anyways, back to this. Once we open the cylinder, we are going to grab, in this case, the speed strips are going to be oriented this way because the way that my right hand is, I'll be reaching from the back and grabbing forward. So from this point, speed strips. I like speed strips because you can load, you can top off with speed strips. You can't do that with uh, speed loaders. So you can roll, drop two in, peel it, roll, and you always roll towards the opposite direction that the cylinder turns under fire. So that way you always have a round ready to go. Okay, then for this point, drop the second one, peel, and the fifth one for this one. So this speed strip actually has six versus the five that the Ruger SP-101 takes, but that's okay, because now I just have a spare. Drop that, close the cylinder, and lock it and then back back in action again okay so that is essentially how to run a revolver make sure that's clear okay we'll go ahead and drop this so there you have it there is my 
dad built setup or at least the conversation about it why i'm doing it really it's just for fun we're just goofing off and just to kind of see where the limits are as far as um how far i can take this equipment i haven't quite decided on the configuration i want for my dad build ar-15 but if i do go for that option i would probably use components that are modern yet not modern if that makes any sense let's say the magpul uvr which is a fantastic stock it's just heavy as heck so there's that let me know if you have any questions in the comments and i can kind of answer this for you if you have any suggestions or anything that you think will work well with this kit do you comment let me know and i think that will be a great contribution to this project since it's the first video of 2022 I'd like to ask you all to like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the notification bell. So thank you all for watching. I look forward to what 2022 will bring us and how much more this channel is going to grow. I really appreciate every single one of you and I do my best to reply to every comment. That's all I got for you today. Bunny Operator, signing out. I come.